Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and I am extremely delighted to start the series on Raj Yogas finally in Vedic Astrology and this is the topic which I thought I will make after some time but it's high time now that I start. So there you go, there's a lot of misconception about Raj Yogas rather than conception. So today we will try to get rid of all the misconceptions and thereby also know what actually Raj Yogas mean and when do they occur and what kind of results we can expect when there is a Raj Yoga all right and of course there are hundreds and thousands and millions and billions of Raj Yogas mentioned in the different classics of astrology we will discuss each one of them in the near future of course hopefully till the time we live but today we will see in general what Raj Yoga means all right what to expect and what not to expect that is also important because many a times what happens is we go to some astrologers and this is typical I get mails where people tell me oh that astrologer told me you have 12 Raj Yogas this superstar film star has 13 Raj Yogas so if 13 one can become a superstar you have 12 you can also become a superstar yes well maybe you become a superstar but is it good for you necessarily well that will depend on the chart all right so if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation from me regarding raj yogas or any other topic and you want to know how the yogas are functioning in your chart then you could always go down to the description section of my videos below where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally okay and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him because today we are talking of raj yogas and for raj yogas two things are very important raj yogas are basically a mixture of lakshmi and narayan all right what do you mean by this Lakshmi and Narayan? Lakshmi is signifying the trines, the fifth house and the ninth house and the ascendant also to some extent. And Narayan is signifying the Kendras, the angular houses, first, fourth, seventh and tenth. All right. And the Lagna is both a Lakshmi Sthan and a Vishnu Sthan. All right. Lagna is the only house which is both a Kendra and a Trikon. And when I'm saying 159, it means from the ascendant. So fifth house from the ascendant and ninth house from the ascendant. Because from the second house, the ascendant, if you make the second house as the ascendant, you will have the sixth and tenth as the trines. All right. So now what happens is Raj Yoga is formed when the lords of these houses, which means the lords of the Kendras and the lords of the Trikonas, they are having some association with each other okay so this this means suppose the lords of the kendras are sitting in the houses of the trikonas and the lords of the trikonas are sitting in the kendra houses then also the raj yoga of course or suppose uh, they are conjunct together in anybody's chart anywhere and if they are conjunct in the Kendra or in the Trikon, then that is the best form of Raj Yoga. And the highest, the pinnacle, the best of the best of the best of all the Raj Yogas is the Dharma Karma Dipati Yoga, which means Dharma is the ninth house and Karma is the tenth house. So whenever there is a link between the ninth and the tenth Lord, then this yoga is formed this according to parashara this is the zenith of all the yogas there is no better yoga than uh, this yoga to have all right so anybody who has this yoga is considered to be extremely fortunate well may not be necessarily in terms of money but to apply spiritual practices in the real world all right that is why this is considered to be the most fortunate yoga because many times you will see people having Raj Yogas and Dharma Karma Dipati Yogas. But they are necessarily not millionaires. Alright. So we need to understand what Raj Yoga is. So 
So now what actually happens? Why why does Parashara say that if the lords of the Kendras and Trikonas are kind of linked in a way, they are known as that's known as Raj Yoga. Why why does Parashara say that? Because the trines, the trikonas, the lords of the trikonas, they bring auspiciousness into our life. Auspiciousness means it can mean many things. Primarily, it means that it brings a feel-good factor. All right, the fifth lord and the ninth lord, or the planets in the fifth and the ninth, they bring a feel-good factor. Feel-good astrologically means that you feel yourself. Yes, that is why fifth house is the house of creativity. Creativity means. What is creativity basically? You are just expressing yourself. That can be anything. You are a good cook. You are a good painter. You are a good musician. Anybody. You are a good dancer. But creativity means you are just being yourself and you are just letting your mind freely flow. Okay, today I want to draw this. I will draw. Today I want to dance like this. I will dance. Yes. Because I always say fifth house is the reason why you get up in the morning. Yes. So it is the most important house in the entire horoscope. Yes, it is the fifth house. It is not even the Lagna. It is not the ninth. It is the fifth house because fifth house is also the house of Bhakti. Yes. And the Bhagavad Gita culminates in Bhakti Yoga, which is, you know, Bhakti Maim Param Krito. Lord Krishna says that in the Gita. And it is also the Bhavad Bhavam of the ninth house, which means it is the ninth from the ninth. So it is like saying ninth house is the house of the Guru, of God. So it's like manifestation of God. It's like the Arudha of the ninth house. All right. So ninth house is the highest. It's the zenith of all the houses, but the Arudha of the ninth house, which is the fifth house. So that is why it is the most important house. And ninth house itself can show your Guru. So it is also a very important house. So now what happens? We know the Kendras represent the pillars of our life. All right. Pillars means the foundational things without which nobody can sustain in this world. So what what does these Kendras mean? Kendras are the first, fourth, seventh and tenth. So Lagna is the body, the self, the way we are perceived as by anybody. That's the Lagna, our intelligence, the that's the word which is used. And the fourth house is the house of home, our sense of happiness, peace and comfort. Yes. So everybody will have a body. Nobody can claim I don't have a body. Then, then nobody sees you. you. You don't exist basically, right? Maybe you are a ghost. But when we are talking of general public, everybody has a body. Ghosts may be there, but they are also in a subtle form and, you know, they are searching for gross bodies. So everything will manifest through the lagna all right and the fourth house is the house of our peace so everybody must be at peace if they want to be happy and everybody wants to be at peace and seventh house is the house of anybody who either supports or opposes us yes people think seventh house is marriage well that is a manifestation of the seventh house but seventh house is not only about marriage all right because Whoever you meet in this world will fall in these two categories. Either they will support you or they will try to break you. Right? Always in these two categories. And then you have the 10th house. And among the Kendras, 10th house is the most powerful because it's the house of your karma. It is where you can exert yourself fully. All right? So now imagine it's like saying the lords of these houses are exchanging with each other okay or they are sitting together or they are mutually aspecting each other the third way by which there is a relationship and there is another way by which there is a relationship which means suppose a kendra lord is sitting in a particular trine all right so suppose the tenth lord is sitting in the ninth house okay and the ninth lord is not sitting in the tenth house it is sitting in the fourth house should I repeat? The 10th Lord is in the 9th and the 9th Lord is in the 4th house. Suppose it's a planet like Venus. Venus being the 9th Lord is in somebody's 4th house. And then what happens? Venus from the 4th aspects the 10th house. Alright, so this is the 4th kind of yoga which is formed. 
So there are four ways. Either it's Parivartan, which means ninth lord is in tenth, or tenth lord is in ninth. Okay, or conjunction, which means the ninth and tenth are sitting together either in ninth or in tenth or anywhere else in the chart. Or they are mutually aspecting each other. Okay, ninth lord is in the Lagna and tenth lord is in the seventh. So they are mutually aspecting each other. Or as I said. The tenth lord is in the ninth, and the ninth lord is aspecting the tenth house. Okay, from the fourth. If it is Jupiter, Jupiter can aspect from the second and sixth also because Jupiter has five and nine as aspects also. So, so now what happens when Raj Yoga forms? When Raj Yoga forms, it is like saying Vishnu, who represents the manifestation, the external world. And Lakshmi, who represents our inner self, yes, both are in harmony. That is what is the meaning of Raj Yoga, and that could be a symptom of a very happy, balanced individual who can do things properly in this world. Or you could say, many times people have this question that, oh, uh, I have this passion, I have these interests, can I pursue it as a part of my career? Yes, which is the tenth house or the sixth house. So you will always observe, depending on the entire chart, of course, if the tenth lord has some link with the trines, the fifth or the ninth, then you can see there is a very high probability that these people can pursue their passion as their career. This is a very strong indication, which tell because now the the career is related to your. Trines, which trines means yourself basically. Yes, what you want that you do, not not that somebody else is dictating what you want to do or what you should do. Okay, so according to Parashar Muni, this is a very great blessing, and depending on the planet, it will signify blessings from the different devatas, and it can signify blessings from Lord Vishnu, from Goddess Lux Lakshmi. From Goddess Durga, from Lord Shiva Himself. All right, so these are great indications. So now the question is, why there is a misconception that Raj Yogas give money? Well, Raj Yogas don't necessarily give money. All right, because if you see the money houses, second, six, tenth, and eleven, these are these are the houses of money, and among these houses, there is only one house, the tenth house, which is which can in any way take part in raj yogas all right so the first misconception conception is that raj yogas will necessarily give you money no they may not give you money okay so <clears throat> now this does not mean that it will make you a beggar or it will not give you money well when raj yogas are there then the probability of uh, having income is more because it's count it's like a self intuitive because suppose you have an exchange between fourth and the fifth all right so fourth lord is in the fifth or fifth lord is in the fourth then it's like saying your passion your inner self is going towards education and education is coming to the house of intelligence yes so the person can have a higher level of intelligence so because of that it can happen in the near future if the dashas permit the person can uh, get a master's degree or a PhD and can earn much, all right. But that's not mandatory. Not everybody who has a good education necessarily earns billions of dollars, all right. And not every billionaire who is there, he or she uh, had a very great education, all right. Now I'm not saying that it's not important for you to study to get money. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if you have these Raj Yogas, you know, for similarly, for example. If you have fifth lord in the ninth, ninth lord in the fifth, then the probability, the possibility increases. All right, but ultimately for money, you have to check the uh, second, sixth, tenth, and eleventh houses. All right, the more prominent they are, the more powerful they are, the more your chances of earning money uh, is there. All right, so Raj Yogas don't necessarily gain uh, mean money, monetary gains at a physical sense, but. <coughs> When Parashar Muni says this is a Raj Yoga, it means it makes you a king. Parashar Muni does not say uh, necessarily externally. Because nowadays what has happened, the entire world has become all about economics. Anybody's power is sought in terms of the money that they have. All right. 
so the problem is we interpret everything as money so when parashar muni says raj yoga he is not meaning the current day scenario all right where money is like god everybody is god so the thing is according to him raj yoga means that we are happy inside as an individual and we have a greater probability a greater chance of being ourselves and anybody who is more stable and more happy inside i am saying not externally internally who is more satisfied has a greater degree of enquiring about god okay now yes there are many people who uh, they feel that they are so happy that they don't need god all right this happens because their happiness is dependent on the externals one who is happy internally will one day at least try to ask that what what is this world all about yes so that is why you may have uh, you you may have money or food to eat or you may not have but if you are having that inner sense of content sattva guna is there yes then you the probability to enquire about you know as uh, it is said athato brahma jigyasa that increases all right so therefore parashar muni says that if the trines and the kendras are exchanging or they are having yoga then this is known as raj yoga it makes you a king which be, which means it makes you as it gives you a feeling as if you are a king yes so king king one of the meanings of the king could be that he is very happy because he has everything what he needs all right so this can also mean that whatever the person has in life he always feels that he has everything okay so these are the things so you your talents your passion your the things which you love are coming to your real world yes when you are acting which is the kendra so this is the actual meaning of raj yoga and what we do is uh, when we come to astrology when we are new then we will check you know oh, okay fourth lord is here fifth lord is here ninth lord is here tenth lord is here all right and then suppose we do not have too many raj yogas then what we do is we get disappointed okay we think oh my friend has 12 raj yogas you know unfortunately i have only 3 well you you should not be envious of somebody who has more raj yogas than you and you should not feel pity on yourself that you do not have raj yogas all right because ultimately it depends on what you want to do in life that will define the raj yogas are good for you or not all right so if somebody is wanting to be happy and content inside as an individual then for them raj yogas are good but if somebody wants to earn too much money and you know wealth and that's like the definition of success in life well then maybe the raj yogas may not do much uh, benefit to him because he will never be satisfied with whatever he earns he or she will be always be running after things all right and that will be visibly uh, that will be visible in his life anybody can say that this person is not happy okay so and at the end i will say that somebody may have one raj yoga somebody may have two and somebody may have 20 raj yogas all right but the person who has one raj yoga or two raj yogas that person that those raj yogas could be so strong so powerful that it is more powerful than having 20 other raj yogas so for example we can take the example of lord ram yes lord ram is a cancer lagna so his jupiter is the ninth lord all right and uh, his jupiter is in the lagna all right so ninth lord is in the lagna it's a great placement you can call it a raj yoga or you may not call it because lagna could be considered a kendra so you could say the trinal lord is in the lagna so it could be a raj yoga but the important thing is mars is his 10th lord and his 10th lord is in the 7th all right mars is in the 7th house and both are exalted jupiter is exalted mars is exalted because jupiter is in cancer and mars is in capricorn both are in their signs of exaltation and jupiter is in digbala all right great 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 strength 
and now these two exalted planets one being in Digbala is aspecting each other oh my god that's like an insane level of strength you know and that is happening in the Lagna which means the only thing this person has to do which is, who is Lord Ram is, is just, he just needs to take birth you know <laughs> yes I mean that is why he is known as Mariada Purushottam, the one who is the perfect follower of religion and spiritual principles. There is nobody better than him and there can be no one better than him. Why? Because, I mean, of course he is Vishnu himself, but when he manifests as an avatar in this world to teach lessons to human beings on how to behave, then we could, you know, somehow try to fit in these Raj Yugas. <laughs> okay, so... Now again, I am not saying anybody who has an exalted Guru in Lagna and exalted Mangal in the seventh, you know, they are mutually aspecting each other and, you know, they will be like Lord Ram. Well, the entire horoscope has to be seen. All right. So my point is, do not jump into conclusions about what Raj Yogas will do for him, for her or for me. Why that person has this much? Why I have that much? Well, you may have one Raj Yoga, that person may have 15, but maybe your Raj Yoga is so powerful that you can cross anybody in this world, alright? And that itself is also not a healthy comparison, just to think that, oh yes, yes, you know, I have that one powerful Raj Yoga, I will cross this person. No, that's not very good. But I'm pointing out these things because people do it, unfortunately. I get mails where people tell me, you know, oh, you know, everybody in my family have minimum three Raj Yugas. I have only one, you know, and then I'm like, so what? <laughs> yes, Raj Yugas are not there. It doesn't mean you can't do anything in life. Yes, those are additions. Those are great blessings of Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Vishnu himself. But that does not mean you don't have anything in life. Yes, it doesn't mean you, you are just sitting and crying and you have nothing to do in life. You are so miserable. Don't think like that. Don't think that your chart is so bad all right your chart is everybody has challenges everybody has weaknesses so it's not that only you have problems all right everybody has problems in this world okay so we should never compare ourselves with anybody so and raj yoga's biggest misconception is it gives you millions of dollars you know it gives you amazing fantastic things in life well it can if you just be yourself and do what you want to do yes then raj yogas really make you happy and satisfied from within all right and that is why parashar muni had said raj yogas are great great blessings so if you have a raj yoga i will make a video later on how to activate the raj yogas all right so there you go that is it from my side if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is obsessed about Raj Yogas. Yes, I will be a Raja. <laughs> and yes, if you want a consultation from me regarding how many uh, Raj Yogas you can or you could have, then you could always go down to the description section where you'll find the link to my website below. And yes, if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel and watch my other videos, okay? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him. Even if you don't have Raj Yogas, you will still find him. Okay. Bye-bye.